Thanks for watching. If you find my videos helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. And please look in the description beneath this video for useful links to other videos and resources to help you learn chemistry. For today's video, I'm going to teach you how to answer the question shown here. I invite you to pause the video right now and try this question on your own first, then hit play and I'll show you how to do it. We'll answer this by using dimensional analysis slash unit conversion, principles that I've taught in previous videos linked to in the description below. We begin by just taking our 15 grams of sulfur, writing it down, and then multiplying it by various sets of parentheses. In our first set, our units should be grams of sulfur in the denominator to cancel out grams of sulfur units in the numerator of the previous term. Now, what can I relate grams of sulfur to unit-wise? Yeah, oftentimes we relate grams of one thing to moles of that same thing using its atomic or molecular weight. In other words, I can relate numerically grams of sulfur to moles of sulfur. Does that get me to individual atoms? Not quite yet, so I'm gonna have to lay down another set of parentheses. Now, can I relate moles of sulfur here to individual atoms of sulfur? Is that possible? Yeah, I think it is, using Avogadro's number. That is to say, one mole of sulfur contains Avogadro's number of individual sulfur atoms. Canceling out my units here, moles there, mole sulfur, mole sulfur, gram sulfur, gram sulfur, you'll see that I do indeed get to the final units that I need, which is sulfur atoms that this question asks. Now we just have to fill in numbers here. If I have one mole of sulfur, how many grams of sulfur do I have? Well, on the periodic table, you'll see that sulfur's atomic mass is about 32. So we'll put that number there. From here on, it's just crunch the numbers. The final answer then comes to this number right here, 2.82 times 10 to the 23rd individual sulfur atoms, which as you can see, lines up with option D.